<clears throat> so. I was once a D fan. I would like to apologize that I ever hated you or listened to anything that piece of shit immoral human being ever said. Damn. Aggressive words, man. But listen, you and everyone else always has is all on their own personal journey of learning. You know, I will not fault you for your prior positions. I will instead welcome you with open arms. Reform is possible. Rehabilitation is possible. That's why I do what I do. So... Hopefully that's not bait, but you know, we're lucky to have you here. He didn't say human. He said human in air quotes. Okay. Slovakia. Talked about that. Let's get to Biden and Trump agreeing to participate in two, not one, but two presidential debates. Brother being like socialist, rich, hypocrite, scammer, then turn right around to tweet at Elon and hope that he boosts their crypto. Yeah. Now to politics as promised, and President Biden and former President Donald Trump actually in agreement on something, and that is the dates for two presidential debates. Like so much of this election season, those debates will be happening way earlier than usual, something both candidates, they agree on that as well. Ed O'Keefe is at the White House for us. He's got the details. Ed, this was a surprise. Good morning. Sure was, Tony. Good morning. But early voting begins in September in some states, and that's why both candidates wanted debates earlier. Trump has asked for... This is correct. Just a reminder, that is exactly why Haas will talk to these D fans when they come in talking shit. Yeah. 100%. Even more debates, but the president's campaign so far has signaled he's only planning. You liking Islam is all I need to know about you. Islam ruined my country. One day, brother, the Shah will come back. I promise. And then you can join the Savak forces in doing the right thing. You know? Instead of the morality police, you can be, uh, you can be a Shah police. Okay? I promise. Inshallah, one day. Yeah, this dude is actually logging in from Westwood for sure. People saying I'm like pro-Islamist fundamentalist is the funniest thing. Because like if I, because in the same breath, once I start talking about like trans rights or whatever, they literally start talking about how they need to melt trans people. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't know if that guy personally has that opinion, but it's, it's pretty funny. Then like in, in most instances, people will literally do that. Hassan is an Islamist fundamentalist. Except for his opinion on, you know, queer rights, uh, women's rights, numerous things, numerous things that are in direct contradiction to any kind of fundamentalist opinion, whether it is an Islamist one or a Christian one, or even a, a, a Jewish fundamentalist one, I guess. The same people that are like, bro, you're an Islamist fundamentalist are also, in many instances, the same people that say, you wear a dress. You are gay. Communism ruined my country, son, or Islam ruined my country, daughter? Ugh. I don't know. They're both terrible. When I first started following you, my husband said I shouldn't be a fan of you because you wanted to reinstate the caliphate. What the fuck? That's awesome. 
planning to do two. Make my day, pal. I'll even do it twice. Two presidential debates now on the calendar. The Savak wasn't all bad. All lies from IR, which you guys are eating up. I love you, Chatter. You're right. No, totally, man. Listen, bro. Listen, bro. My grandfather, when he was removing the nails from suspected dissidents, he was doing it for Iran. It was not that bad, bro. When he was actually removing tooth and black bagging, okay, with uh, techniques he learned from the CIA, he was doing it for Iran, bro. I am Persian. Please, uh, Joe Biden, glass Tehran. My people yearn for freedom. In a public back and forth, President Biden and former President Donald Trump agreeing to debate on June 27th and September 10th. Donald Trump lost two debates to me in 2020. And since then, he hadn't shown up for debate. Biden's challenge to debate Trump comes as recent polls show the race stalled, especially in battleground states. But more concerning for the president, numbers show true weakness when voters are asked about how he's addressing the war in Gaza and the economy. I'm here. I'm ready, willing, and able. And the former president's used his brief appearances outside his criminal trial in Manhattan to repeatedly challenge Biden to debate. Wants to go even bigger. I think there should be more than two, and I think they should be in large venues. It's just more exciting. The first debate will be held in the battleground state of Georgia, but without an audience. And the other will be a primetime face-off held in a news studio instead of a debate stage. I am pleased to welcome you to this first presidential debate. This surprise arrangement likely spells the end of the nonpartisan commission on presidential debates, which has held them since 1988. And these joint appearances have a way of shaping perceptions about the candidates. Thanks especially to how they're joked about later. Governor Bush? Strategery. <laughs> yeah, that's a great fucking, that's a great, great instance where the proof that you are showing immediately destroys the argument that you're making because that motherfucker became president. So all the memes about how stupid he is was completely inconsequential. Just saying. Vice President Gore. Lockbox. But the commission's 2020 debates drew criticism from all sides for being especially chaotic and contentious. Will you shut up, man? Contentious as in Trump did almost execute Biden. Like, Trump did do an attempted assassination on Joe Biden. Something that we forget about. He literally had COVID. He motherfucking had COVID, bro. He was, he literally was, he, he was sick. And he went up on that stage against an 800-year-old corpse. Just like, <laughs> coughing in his direction and shit. Being like, hey, hey, shake my hand. Come on. I mean, I'm exaggerating. I don't think he did that, but. Yeah, it failed. Listen, who is on your list, Joe? This Who's is on your so list? right. Gentlemen, is, I think this we've is ended so this unprecedented. Ed, I really didn't think this was going to happen. So what was it that brought both candidates together to say, Shake yeah, we're on board? Hand. <clears throat> Shake my hand, Brandon. If you're a real man, Joe Biden, you would shake my hand. With a debate now. Look, these guys both want to do this. They can't help themselves. The president eager to remind the country of the contrast between him and Donald Trump and motivate people. ABC will allow simulcast. CNN won't. Bad form, CNN. Very bad form. ABC will share the debate with other broadcasts and streaming news networks. The simulcast, CNN, has said only that its debate will air on its own platforms. Classic. I just keep repeating that over and over again with the hopes that people will also fucking feel that same way. 
one day. If I keep saying it over and over again, more people will be on board with it. Someone's in a good mood. Yeah, I like, I'll be honest, I, I like uh, coming back home and streaming from home. This is, I enjoy this, you know? I miss my dog. I miss my uh, my structured, regimented lifestyle. You know what I mean? I'm addicted. Yeah, I mean, I love what I do. I'm very fortunate. Oh. Biden only looks like his mom says he looks good. And you know you're stoked about the debates? Oh, yeah, I am. You also said Mossadegh was democratic. He was not. This shows this show you know nothing about Iran. You're right. Mossadegh was a bad guy, dude. He he really fucked up. When um the people of Iran consented, Mossadegh consented, but you know who didn't consent? British Petroleum. It's really fucked up when you don't actually take into care or consideration the the profit margins of British Petroleum. I agree. I agree with you. You're right. It is the most it is the most anti-democratic thing you can do. Thank God. Thank God America got in, involved in Iran, right? Man, he made the law to make him dictator and also stop the election. Bro, you literally want the shot of return. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? You are literally defending a monarch. Hello? What are you saying? <laughs> it's like, dude, <laughs> Mossadegh was very, very unforgiving and, and very undemocratic. You do not know your history, which is why Iran must return the Shah to what? Oh, the monarchy, which is the greatest form of democracy that you can get to. Anyway, so I said some words that were very mean. Well, not really, but I, I said some stuff about this, and apparently liberals got very mad at me, and I didn't even realize because I don't have Twitter on my phone. People inclined to vote for but him. Let's finish this, and I'll, that we'll, we'll cover that contrast. in a second. The former president's been saying for months he'll debate anytime, anywhere. He also wants that contrast, hoping to reinforce perceptions about issues like the economy and take it directly to his opponent. And look, at a time when voters are saying either of these guys is too old to do the job, the other guy wants to show that they're quicker on their feet and will be able to withstand four more years. Tony. All right, Ed, thank you very much. At least next and the Israel. So before we get to the Israel stuff, um, I saw that this was going on and I had a statement about it. I said, I, for one, I'm excited to watch two 80 year old men. yap about a bunch of issues. They almost completely align on with respect to policy while acting as though they're miles apart from one another. Aaron Rupar, liberalism's greatest soldier actually hit me with a quote tweet and fucking hit me where it hurts. He said, Trump supports stripping bodily autonomy from women. Biden does not. Trump supports taking health care away from tens of millions of people. Biden does not. Trump wants to round up migrants and put them in detention camps. Biden does not. Trump's... This part is a little bit... Excuse me. What? That part's a little weird. <laughs> Trump supports executing drug dealers. Biden does not. Trump wants to withdraw from NATO and form an alliance with Russia. Biden does not. I could go on. So what's really interesting about this take, okay, what's really, really, really interesting about this take ultimately is annoying ideology. If so, Rupar got that in spades. No. Some of the stuff that he's mentioning is just, you know, not even fair to bring up in this conversation, considering that uh, I, it's ironic because there are aspects of the Biden administration that is demonstrably better. Bango lives is correct. There are aspects of the Biden administration that is demonstrably better. It's ironic that he didn't mention them, though. Like, for example, not eviscerating federal agencies and actually utilizing them, which Biden has done. But these guys are so permanently warped in posturing against Trump brain 
The problem with liberalism is that it is inherently reactionary. Maybe not as bad as like the actual uh, Republican attitude, but overall liberalism is also inherently reactionary as an ideology, which is precisely the reason why they always talk about the boundaries of what they are not, what they are up against. But slowly but surely, it literally, it literally, the, the, the things that you can say you are advocating for, the things that you are saying that you should be voting for Biden for get smaller and smaller and smaller in that time frame. He didn't even mention any of the fucking good things that Biden has done. Things that I will readily admit and routinely talk about. Okay? In my tweet, I singled out immigration, Israel, Palestine, and tariffs. Those are the three key issues that Biden is 100% aligned with Trump on. Okay? And then I also mentioned one aspect that he's not aligned with Trump on, which is his most important key difference between him and Trump. Now, problem here is liberals don't even fucking know how to advocate for the Democratic Party correctly. Liberals also don't personally understand how politics is supposed to work. Okay? Liberals only operate on lesser evil voting. People do not care about lesser evil voting. Okay? People do not think critically on many issues, and they especially don't th think critically on lesser evil voting. If you consistently advocate uh, on just how not as bad as the Republicans you are, you are going to whittle away all of the people that would readily vote for you. Keith Olberbitch not only replied to you, but he also quote tweeted and wrote the same thing again with a bunch of spelling errors because he was so horned up. I mean, didn't we do that last election? Yes, we did do that last election. And notice something I have personally stated, okay? Time and time again, was this is him, by the way. Wait, that's what Aaron looks like. Oh my God. Okay. Something that I mentioned time and time again is a key principle in why people vote a certain way. Okay. Democrats have completely lost touch with the reality that you are supposed to offer something to people. Okay, not just simply engage in a defensive posture. You have to offer them something, and then you have to prove to the people that voted for you that it was a good idea to vote for you. Engaging in pure team sports to say, like, no, it's, a, it's better if it's a D instead of an R that's doing the same exact initiatives, then, you know, it feels like your team won, and then you can own the fucking conservatives, is not going to be good enough to actually win elections consistently. The Democratic Party's platform that they advocate for across the board if we look at it holistically is still significantly better than the republican party's platform the issue is that the democratic party rarely ever follows through on their agenda consistently loses and says oh well it's because of the structural hurdles that were placed in front of us a thing that no republican has ever stopped themselves from advocating for to a detriment mind you because republican politics and Republican policy are both, I mean, Republican politics is good, but their policies are bad, right? And the Democratic Party's policies are supposed to be good, but their politics are supposed to be bad. Republicans never fucking say, oh, man, like Mitch McConnell never goes, oh, dude, we have structural hurdles. That's why we can't allow Obama to uh, appoint a Supreme Court justice. That's like, that's not something that stops them, okay? They do their bidding for their most loyal constituencies, all right, they do it sometimes to a detriment to the uh, to the continuation of the the party. What is this, bro? I swear, every take you have is wrong. You say Israel is an apartheid state that is completely wrong. I live in Israel and it is no apartheid. Only apartheid in the Middle East is in Arab countries and Iran with gender apartheid. I love you, Chatter. Thank you for that take. That was brilliant. Yes, you're right. Every every human rights group is is wrong. You are right. How is this argument lesser evil voting? It's not only lesser evil voting when the counterpart pundit is diametrically opposed to the other, considering I'm being charitable to him and seeing his post about policy as about policy. What? I'm going to get to it. Hold on.
Let's continue. So. Yeah, the Shaw Dick Rider has moved away from the monarch. Who also doesn't have exactly favorable opinions on women, mind you. To saying that as a Persian, Persian soldier living in Israel, all of the human rights groups that say that, you know, that correctly accurately assess Israel's apartheid regime as anything but an apartheid, as, as just an apartheid regime, uh, they're all wrong, actually. Anyway. <clears throat> so, moving away from that uh, idiotic talking point that I've addressed a million times over, let's get back to the point of contention here, okay? So, the Democratic Party is supposed to say, look, if you vote for us, we are not as bad as the Republican Party. We will, uh, we will scale back on the Republican Party's death and destruction. We will scale back on the deregulation. We will scale back on the environmental impact, the damaging impact on the environment as a consequence of deregulation and many other things. We will... Uh, we will defend labor rights. We will defend workers. We will uh, create better economic opportunities, upward social mobility for some of the wealth, uh, some of the some of the least wealthy Americans, some of the poorest Americans. All that good stuff. We will protect immigrants. We will protect marginalized people, whether they're trans, black, brown, whatever, and also women's rights. We will protect women's reproductive rights specifically. Okay. These are the things broadly that the Democratic Party is advocating for as they position themselves as not the Republican Party. The Republican Party is advocating for the opposite things, right? However, back in the day, the idea was that if you voted for a Democrat, at least they would never champion the Republican Party's position on these issues, right? Nowadays, the Democratic Party doesn't even do the lip service. They just say, fuck you, vote for us, and that's it. And in that time frame, in that process, the things that they can point to get smaller and smaller and smaller as the daylight between the two parties and their policies actually reduce. In 2020, you could say, and the Democratic Party did say, that all of the brutalization that you're seeing from the police against the free press all the brutalization that you're seeing uh, from uh, the police, Trump's police, against protesters, uh, we will never do that. That was a lie, as you can see clearly with what's going on with the pro-Palestinian demonstrations all around uh, college campuses all around the United States of America. They're beating the shit out of students. They're beating the shit out of teachers. They're beating the shit out of even the press. <clears throat> Another thing that the Biden administration said was we are not going to be like the Trump administration with their child separation policy and their immigrant detentions. We are going to be America is a nation founded on immigration. We are all descendants of immigrants. We are a wonderful nation. We could take care of all these people. We are going to do our very best to reverse Trump's policies on immigration. The Biden administration, on the other hand, literally continued Title 42. The Trump administration's only policy in combating COVID was Title 42, saying that the CDC thinks that these migrants might have, uh, might have COVID and therefore they can't come into the country in, a, in an effort to protect Americans from COVID while simultaneously denying COVID was real anyway. The, the, the Brandon administration continued that policy. The Brandon administration continued immigrant detention. The Brandon administration... Also, four years after, it ran a successful campaign, mind you, against the Trump administration, saying that they were going to reverse in the first 100 days all of the Trump administration's immigration policies, turned around and advocated for the exact same bill that the Trump administration was trying to pass over and over again. Funding the border wall, funding Customs and Border Patrol, and, and beefing up border security, assuming that the right-wing framing on the issue of immigration was actually not one of, of you know, false economic, uh, like a, immigration has always been an economic issue. Um, still, falsehoods are, are presented in the conversation on the Republican front 
and the Democrats are supposed to tackle it from the economic front and be like, no, they're not actually taking your jobs, yada, 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 right? But they dropped that completely and took on the right-wing framing on the border. They took on the framing that the Republicans were advancing, saying that, no, immigration is actually a matter of national security. Immigrants are violent. Immigrants are rapists. Immigrants are thieves. And what ended up happening is basically the same exact thing that you see all around the world. You see in Europe especially, right? That people are now more militant against immigrants than ever before. And the reason for that is because the Democratic Party has also given up on, on arguing on the real boundaries of this issue and arguing for real solutions to this problem. A problem that is born out of right-wing, white nativist, anti-immigrant sentiments. Okay? I am not a violent rapist. Thief says Iraqi Mo. Daddy Pi says, I think immigrants are terrible. Okay? Great. I love having a diversity of opinion in the chat. Meanwhile, uh, regardless of the diversity of opinion, both of you guys are going to see the top of the hour ad break. Because neither of you are subscribed. For $5 or for free. That's right. If you no longer want to see those ads, immigrant, naturalized citizen, natural born U.S. citizen, doesn't matter. You still need to subscribe for $5 or for free. Here's the three-minute ad break now. Uh, Greg Abbott pardons Daniel Perry, the man who mowed down BLM protesters and clearly premeditated it. Yeah, uh, we'll get to that as well. It's at least shocking white supremacist action taken by that fucking piece of shit. My point is, if you keep capitulating the right wing framing on issues, you're going to lose that issue completely. Because why the fuck would people believe you? Now that you've had an attitude shift, when there are people that have been on the immigrants or rapist side with uh, clarity, with moral clarity, for quite some time. All you've now done 